Hi and welcome, I'm Andreas. We recently got a couple of new housemates, three Mongolian gerbils, and to hold their cage and store all the stuff that's needed for them, I built a simple yet elegant sliding door cabinet. If you're interested in how I did that, join me in my workshop, you're very welcome. So, all the material is cut up, um, the toe kick, the, the top and bottom, the sides, the doors, the, uh, the shelves and so on. So the next thing would be to prepare everything before assembling. Um, I have to prepare the joinery, which I'm going to do with biscuits, and I'm going to have to cut some um, rabbits for the back panel and some grooves for the sliding doors to slide in. So the first step will be now to prepare the biscuit joinery.
So this fits together and now the next steps are cutting the grooves for the sliding doors to run in, drilling the holes for the shelves and cutting the rabbits for the back panel. So on this project, I have grooves in three elements that have to match perfectly, which means that repeatability is absolutely key. Um, on the other hand, I'm making 17 millimeter grooves with a 16 millimeter bit. So I'm doing one pass and then I have to adjust the fence by one millimeter and do another pass. So in order not to mess up, um, I have to think carefully about the order in which I make those cuts. So I made all the cuts with the one groove then in, at a certain depth. Then I adjusted um, the fence by one millimeter, did all the other passes and all the other pieces. And then I had the problem that in the top piece the groove needs to be deeper than in the other two. So that's when I first used um, this revolver depth, depth stop that my router has and this allows me to switch between three different depths and switch back to the original depth reliably. So this is the first time I've used this but it came in very handy because now I can do 15 millimeter grooves and 5 millimeter grooves um, repeatable um, and I don't have to mess around with the, with the turning depth stop, which is of course not as reliable. Um, but still, if you run into something like this, it's absolutely key to plan out which cut you do in which order, so that you don't have to come back and try to get the router fence aligned just by measuring, because measuring is never as accurate as running up a fence against a piece of wood. Um, one last thing that I'll do before I go to the next step is drill the holes for the shelf pins. Um, there are two approaches basically to this. When you drill the, the holes for the shelf pins at this stage, they are much easier to do because you can handle single panels. Um, there is one drawback to this though. Um, later I'm going to oil this with the white oil and the oil will inevitably come into those holes so you have to clean out those holes in some way or try not to get as much oil into them. Um, the other approach would be to oil everything first and then to drill the holes for the shelf pins. Then of course it's not as easy because the cabinet is already assembled, the surface is already finished, you have to be much more careful clamping the the jig for drilling the holes is not as easy and so on. So I'm going to try this time to drill the holes now and just be careful when oiling not so as not to get as much oil into the pins. And I thought I might just use a Q-tip to clean them out if any oil gets into those holes. 
that's um, what I'm going to do now. First though, I have to clean up this mess but, because while I really like my Makita router, um, it has terrible dust collection and so I never bothered to attach a dust collection hose because it doesn't work anyway. So routing that many grooves and rabbits has created huge amounts of dust here which I'm going to clean first and then go for the shelf pin holes. Now all the parts are prepared so I can um, think of assembling the carcass but before I do that I'm going to sand everything with 120 grit and the insides of the carcass also with 240 which will be my final um, grit for the inside. Um, the outsides I don't do with that fine grit yet because when um, putting the carcass together and gluing it up they will take some small punches and so on but on the insides it's better protected and it's much easier to sand with the finer grid um, when the boards are separate than when they are assembled. So that's the next step and then I can put it together. Uh, the parts for the carcass are ready for glue up um, but one thing occurred to me that I should do before I glue up the carcass and that's gluing up the, the toe kick that's going to be um, basically just a frame out of these seven centimeter high um, plywood pieces and I'm going to glue them up to, a, to be a close frame and then um, drill some pocket holes to attach them to the bottom of the carcass and um, I think it's better to do this before I do the glue up because then both things can dry and while the carcass sits on the workbench um, that is occupied so it's better to do the small thing first which I can move away then for glue drying and then do the glue up on the carcass.
So, now for the glue up. Now the cabin is out of the clamps, um, I've removed any glue squeeze out that was still somewhere around, uh, I've checked if everything is okay and most things are, there is a little bit of shift in some pieces but nothing too bad, nothing that I can't fix. So the next step will be to cut the back panels but before I do that I'm going to wet these edges here, the ones that are exposed, um, with a very wet cloth so as to make the grain stand up and let it sit for the time while I cut the back panels and then afterwards I can sand it um, smooth again and then the grain will not stand up when I apply the finish but will do so now and then this creates a much smoother um, edge especially in this plywood which of course has every second layer and grain which tends to raise its grain even more when it gets in contact with the liquid finish. So the doors fit, which is nice. Um, what remains is drilling the holes that serve as handles or yeah, pieces where you can grip. Um, I thought about different sorts of handles. Um, if you want to know more about how to place the handles and what handles to use, um, there'll be a section about that, all the door stuff and sliding stuff in the What I Learned video, which I'll link to at the end of this video. Um, now I just take the measurements of the holes and drill them and then we're finally coming to words close to the end.
So now I'm ready for painting the whole thing. Um, I'm going to use a white wax based paint by my partner PNZ. It's supposed to give a nice white layer which lets the wood grain shine through and I suppose I will need two layers to give it a good finish and I'll see how that goes. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It looks great here in the spot with the glass cage on top of it and it's very nice that it has the same outer dimensions that the cage so it really looks like one piece. It's also very practical to have all the stuff down here um, and all covered in this nice cabinet. I really like it. In the next couple of days I'm going to publish a video about all the things you need to consider if you want to build your own sliding doors, cabinet or whatever. Um, you'll find this video in the spot here right next to me and if you're not interested in that, um, right below it there's another video for you to watch. Now I hope you enjoyed this, take care and I hope to see you soon. Bye.